Hey there, pals. Today's episode is being brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your belly tees and teeth whiteners. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. So you can get their help when you need them. Start building your website today at squarespace.com and enter offer code READ, that's READ, at checkout to get 10% off Squarespace. You should. This week's episode of The Read is also being brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox is full of flavor, but without any of the junk of regular snack foods. They just have fun, flavorful snacks made with ingredients that you can trust and a smart snack guarantee. So if there's ever anything you don't love, you can just let the people at NatureBox know and they'll replace it in your next order. You can get started today by going to naturebox.com slash the read to unbox a world of taste and possibility. That's naturebox.com slash the read. Go now, let them know we sent you. And now let's get the show started. Just when your girl was out of pop fucks to give. (laughs) Right? Weren't we over it? Just, you know, I just have so many feelings. I have so many things on my heart, on my soul Mm -hmm. at the moment. I just want to preface this by saying... That I had a shit week. I had this cold. I didn't get to go to Los Angeles. I had to reschedule my yeah. shit because I was sick. I'm still coming off of that. It feels like, I don't even know, like the, like a Travis Scott album is in my chest. Okay. And I'm just trying to hack the rest that of that out. Bad. And so, you know, just mm-hmm. weariness. Yeah, stress. And... <laughs> Then, <laughs> like, oh. she cannot keep doing this to me. I'm just preparing my heart and mind and spirit right now to really go in and give Beyonce everything that she has earned from us over these past few days. Because I just want the Lord to know that I'm so thankful for that Creole gift that he sent down to just bless the rest of us and improve the fuck out of our raggedy ass, dusty ass lives. Like, I just... We, we give thanks for Beyonce today. Here I am minding my black business. I'm just sitting here on Twitter chopping this shit up. In fact, I was in the middle of a conversation with uh, Sadie's about uh, the difference. <laughs> That's your thing. <laughs> the difference between Jamaican colors and Rastafarian colors. And I feel like I'm going to continue that conversation at some point because a couple of you girls need to hear it. Oh, okay. And then Beyonce said, uh, girl, fuck all that. Like, you have that conversation when y'all are talking about anti. But today. Why would you do that? Today is a new day. Woo. Out of nowhere. In Here the we middle go again. of a fucking. Se- oh, so wait, first of all, welcome. are we doing the whole welcome to the read thing? Just know that I had shit to do. <laughs> We, I was busy, okay? I was in the middle of fucking Brooklyn when this shit came out. I had to stop everything in the chair at the hairdresser. <laughs> no, I don't. Give me a minute. I had a whole day. Like, I had a day planned. I went to bed like, tomorrow I'm going to do this, 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 and that. Mm-hmm. And Beyonce come and said, you are going to do none of those things <laughs> because I have a new song and video out. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what you actually going to do is sit your ass right there on the couch and stay there watching my video on repeat for the rest of the fucking night because you don't have a life. And if you did, it's over now. Get your studies together. Your life belongs to me. Is what you really need to be doing. I'm the captain now. Beyonce is the motherfucking captain. Are you stupid? Somebody on my Twitter was like, Beyonce could say right now, everybody go to Union Square and it would look like Woodstock in 45 minutes. I said, you the fuck right. You are absolutely right. Because who would be the first bitch on the train? Me right here. Like, oh, hey, girl. So listen, (laughs) I came because Beyonce told me to be here. And so I have arrived and I was waiting on my gift. I am calling the freshest Uber. That surge is going to be 4.5 <laughs> times the, the normal rate. <laughs> and I'm still going to have to hop out at 50th Street and run. Yes, you are. So the traffic is going to be backed up <laughs> from 50th to 14th. <laughs> let me out. No, I'm not playing this game. 
Like, I don't even understand oh. how you can continue to just do this yes. just out of nowhere. You can't just play with people's hearts. Like we have like beating functioning hearts that work like normal ones. Right. I don't know what you've got in your superhuman ass chest, Beyonce, but we don't have that. We beat normally and you can't just be stopping the world when you just black ass feel like it because bitches can drop dead. We had this conversation and I said the day before because I felt I tasted it. I tasted it in the okay. air. Right. I felt like there's something is going on. You got this Super Bowl shit and bitches is talking about new songs and she out here shooting videos and shit with blankets and snuggies and shit all over her head and Blue Ivy's head and everybody's in goddamn tunics and, and hiding shit and doing all this secretive right. shit. She in New Orleans. Sneaking and doing around all this, New Orleans. Sneaking around and playing the same game that she yep. did the last time that she peeled our goddamn wigs back. And we told you back. niggas to stay ready every episode for the past two and a half years two we have told you niggas to stay ready. And I have in fact, two and a half weeks ago, <laughs> we did an episode talking about this same shit. We, we didn't even believe a tour was coming. Right. And we still said, guess what, girl? Save your next few checks Because you never know. Because you never know. And the season is coming. Yep. We are feeling it. We don't know what's happening. We have questions. But it's on the way. So just be smart with your savings. Get on the TV mm -hmm. and watch whatever the fuck you need to be watching MSNBC. Whoever is out here trying to give you some goddamn financial advice and just take note so that you too may be blessed. And here she is. Yes. What? What? All you had to do was save $20 every month since December 2013 and you would have your touring album money ready for Tuesday morning when them tickets go on sale. That's all you because had to do. Because guess what? If you ask me, am I going? Bitch, it's not even a question. What kind of fucking question is that? So you just gonna spit in my goddamn face? So you just gonna disrespect the fuck out of me? You're calling me and my family tree a bitch? Right. Is that what so you're you call, doing so today, you, bitch? So you calling my mama a bitch? How? that's what I heard. Because we can fight. <laughs> I mean, right, bitch, would you like to go outdoors? Like, let's do this. Because how are you gonna ask me, am I going to the Beyonce show? This bitch go, okay, so wait, where do we start with, like... So let's, okay, let's just bring it, let's dial it back. Right, because I'm about to get into the Super Bowl now, and we ain't even discussed... We haven't even right, gotten to the Right, we haven't even meets. gotten there. Like, we have to start at the start. Because place. I just want it to be clear that Beyonce... This bitch. ...does not give a fuck... This bitch, Why ...about you what this? you are doing in the here oh and the God. now. She doesn't give a fuck about what you had planned. She doesn't give a fuck about what you just released. She doesn't give a fuck about the foundation of your lace front. What she gives a fuck about damn is her. getting this goddamn paper. And God damn it, she's going to give you a show That's behind it. it, bitch. So if you don't stay ready... Don't be surprised mm -hmm. if your ass is blown off when in the motherfucking the wind. Out. We tried to tell you, girl. She's going to do what the fuck she wants to do. Last She's week, making the rules. That. She's the oracle. She created the goddamn matrix. She knows all the shortcuts and the loopholes and the wormholes too, bitch. She has it all planned out. She's three steps ahead of you, girls. Like, keep up. Right. So. Exactly. Here comes this video on YouTube. Yes. That is unlisted. Ladies and gentlemen, the bitch. that means bitch. simply <laughs> that the video is not up for public view. It is not private. It means that you may only watch the video if you have the link to it. Mm -hmm. That means <laughs> that someone somewhere found this YouTube account or someone at Parkwood said, you know what, girl, we're just going to make this account with an egg and yes. send this shit to a stand. And Just watch the ripple effect. Leak for, it to be leak. <laughs> for our own personal enjoyment. Yes. Just to see the... Just to see the hive go up and then to watch all the rest of you motherfuckers go up. Because the shade in that video being unlisted is that you have to give enough of a fuck about Beyonce to, to find that link. For it. That's right. Ain't no just going on YouTube and looking for because I tried it before I realized the shit wasn't public. Ain't no just going on YouTube and looking for the shit. It's not there, ho. Sign up on title or have the fucking link to see it. That lets you know Beyonce don't give a uh, fuck about whether y'all like her shit. Beyonce you don't get no goddamn notifications. No you ain't getting no goddamn no. This Earn bitch, it. This bitch is putting out new videos and not even telling niggas. Like it's not like it's not even for you. Like come find it if you want to. Like Oh, like, oh, I'm not Beyonce. Like, I'm not just the biggest fucking entertainer in the whole goddamn world. I'm just going to release some brand new shit out of nowhere and keep my shit unlisted so that you have to come find it because you 
care. Eight and you know you do. views plus 24 hours Because in, you niggas and care. And the video was still because unlisted. You because you care. wanted a good portion. Come on. And that's it. Come on. So the song is called Formation. And it opens up. With a voiceover from Messy Maya, rest in peace. Oh my God. And that which that took me right there. Alone. I said, Lord, not Maya. Lord Jesus, not Maya. Lord God. Here we go. Oh shit. I In wasn't New ready. Orleans, I was not ready. With these queens shaking ass, making it roll like 24s, just just here. Yes. And then she gives us these lines. The first thing she said, and again, I have to reference Kia. The first thing she says on this song is y'all hate is corny with that Illuminati mess. Mm -hmm. Kia said the first thing out of her. I want us to be clear, Mm -hmm. but I was raised to know the only (laughs) true and living Christ the King. Ain't that it? You y'all are a mess with this Illuminati. And you are corny for even (laughs) implying. (laughs) That I don't know him. And I love for Beyonce to come out and be like, really? That's what you niggas think about me? Like, that's that's what you can come up with? The you Illuminati? that mad? Like, y'all still saying that same tired shit? I love that. Yes, tell these niggas they ain't worthy of your attention. She then goes on to say that she loves her baby's hair with baby hair and afros. Did. Cut. <sighs> bitch. To Blue Ivy Carter. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My baby. I and love her. And Destiny's grandchild. <laughs> yes. Those beautiful little girls. And she's just running around New Orleans fucking shit up. The look on her face confirmed for me mm-hmm. that Blue Ivy is quite aware of who she is. She is. She understands her net worth. Mm-hmm. She understands her influence. Mm-hmm. She understands that you hating hoes don't understand how to cultivate edges yes. or how to make your hair prosper. Mm-hmm. But she said, here I am yes. with my beautiful natural hair. Mm-hmm. There you are with acidic burns <laughs> where your foundation began. There once. you are cutting off a hairline so that you can glue something to your head and call it a day. And here I am prospering in the natural shit God gave me. And it just made me think about that episode of the show where I had to cuss y'all out for talking so crazy about Beyonce and Blue Ivy. Like you ain't never seen a black child's head before. Like I just uh, like like you like you wanted Beyonce to give that baby a soul in or some shit. It just didn't make no fucking sense. Of course. Of course, Blue Ivy should be allowed to go out and flourish with her big old nappy ass afro. And she is very well aware that she is better than all the rest of us. That smirk on that baby's face. She was sitting here like, and what was it? <laughs> right? And, and what, what was said? Because I'm what here now. What exactly was it that because you were I'm saying? Because I'm here now, bitch. So speak up, ho, from the back. I'm sorry. I didn't. What was that? I didn't hear that? you from the broke section, bitch. Let me move a little closer. Any so questions? your impoverished ass. Any questions? Oh, Blue Ivy. Yes, God. <laughs> yes, God. Blue Ivy is going to grow up a little black girl who is very secure in her blackness and is very well aware that she's the shit just as she is. And I'm so excited for that, baby. Um, I love my Negro nose with Jackson 5 nostrils. <sighs> Made feels- all this money, but they can never take the country out me. That's real. That's me. I've got hot sauce in my bag in addition swag. to swag <laughs> get this bitch excuse me so jackson five like negro knows jackson five nostrils i think was her way of saying you know what all y'all do is take from black women and want to have our asses and hips and skin tone and all the rest of the shit about us but you don't take the parts of us that you think are desirable you'll take our music and rhythm and everything else but not this big old negro ass wide ass big ass like just vacuum cleaner looking ass nose like y'all act like it's not good enough and it fucking is i thought she was just talking about jay-z nose but that's well too. yes but i, I think she was making a bigger point like as to well yeah absolutely beauty. yes right like for sure afros and baby hair real baby hair not you white bitches out here gelling your shit down trying to be new shit no bitches with real actual baby hair and that's, negro features that's the greatest part about the song which i'm going to get to in a second is the relatability yes, there? Yes. That's what the song and it, it like that's in what it was for me is about. Like, okay, it's not for everybody. You was confused by the song in the video. That's because it wasn't the fuck for your bitch ass. Hot sauce in my bag. Then we have Frida. 
I was so proud. So proud. That just really, like, I actually, I feel like I got emotional. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, first of all, I love Frida. I love Maya. Mm -hmm. I've loved them and Bounce Music for, like, so long. My whole life. And then just for them to have that presence and for you to see, like, these gay black men Mm -hmm. in the video, even for seconds, you got these girls in the fucking hair store. Yes. You got all of this just, like. With the crazy color weave that's ghetto when we do it, but cute when Kylie Jenner does it. Flip flops and socks on. Yes. Like all of this. The these real lo- shit that we've been doing. She's on top of a police car in this neighborhood that's flooded, but then she's in an empty swimming pool with all of these with women these in Gucci outfits. <laughs> in the middle of a fucking swap meet parking lot. Looking oh, like- <laughs> in denim. God damn her. What is wrong with you? She did it. How do you do this? What? What? Are we going to talk about how every single scene was a motherfucking look and this bitch was draped from head to toe in like, it was just like black, gothic, early 20th century New Orleans fashion. Right. Like early, beautiful, gorgeous, like old school New Orleans with the umbrellas and these like the corsets and all mm-hmm. of this stuff. And you got all these beautiful women with different kinds of black hair yes. sitting right next to her. Talk, Cause I Oh, in the sitting slay. room, those yes. girls. Yes, beautiful women. And all it just was gorgeous. The set design, whoever dressed Beyonce and these girls, it just was From gorgeous. That to riding passenger in this yes, fucking car this, in this car fucking Chevy. Leaned out with these braids <laughs> just swinging them like long ass just Ugh, box braids. All of these different things. And then this bitch had the nerve to say, if he fuck me good, I'm going to take his ass to Red Lobster. And then repeated it in case y'all thought she was bullshitting. Not Nobu. Not Nobu. Not Philippe <laughs> Chow. Red Lobster. Yes. Not one of these Relatability. Right. That cheap Where ass you niggas go. restaurant that you <laughs> niggas frequent every goddamn Where you weekend. Go. <laughs> talking about we need more bread. Mad that they don't have the biscuits. Right. Every time you need an additional right. biscuit. She said, I too. This song was for us. This was a bow down for the community. <laughs> it was. This was for everybody, bitch. It was. I slay. We slay, you slay, co-slay, co-pay, <laughs> all of it. Shut the fuck up. Like, girl, it this was, is for everybody. It was life. It was I'm just, just... Okay, let me I'm, dial I'm, ve- I'm full thinking about the video all over again because <coughs> there's so many moments. In front of that big-ass black wide brim hat where all you could see was her lips. She had these fine-ass men around her. Like, it was just... It was beautifully shot. Shout out to Melina for what everything that she did with the video and just being dope overall and all together. And shout out to you girls who needed some attention because you shot some flicks and sold the damn rights to them, (laughs) which makes it open for girls to then purchase or use the license for the footage and other things. You are welcome. (laughs) Right. So the article I saw on Huffington posted that they didn't even shoot it and sell it like some dance and somebody else sent them down there to film in different <coughs> cities like for this documentary so not only did you shoot the footage like you but it never you actually it belonged to Sundance. you right. right so how you complaining about somebody using something and you said no when it never belonged it wasn't to you. yours in the nobody first cares place. if you said no because you don't own it girl but i have made my mind up uh, that you girls aren't going to distract me from enjoying yes. Beyonce this you're not, era. You're not. You're not. There's nothing if you, you have can a say. valid concern, I'm sure that there is an email somewhere mm-hmm. on Parkwood. I'm sure that there isn't actually. <laughs> but you can just probably speak to who it, whoever it is above yes. or below you that you serve mm-hmm. and talk to them about it. Because what I'm going to do is have fun and enjoy what she's giving me. Yes. I don't give a fuck if you like her or don't like her or like that I talk about her or like that I don't talk about her or whatever the fuck it is I'm gonna have a good goddamn time yes. because overall this song is less about like I feel like it is definitely making a lot of statements and some of them are political but overall it's about love and about us enjoying who we are and mm-hmm. having a good damn time yes. she's not on this record talking about and you know what Trayvon Martin and you know what uh, uh, George Zimmerhale and you know what <laughs> Donald Trump and you know what fist in the air it's about dancing and loving all who these different are. loving who we are right and she's using the artistry 
Hence the term artist. She's using <laughs> like the symbolism yeah. in the video and in this performance is made is used to make a statement. Mm-hmm. And that statement will then have people have conversation mm-hmm. about those types of things. And you girls sitting here talking about, oh, well, is this what she's going to be doing for the Black Lives Matter movement? It's just Talking so, about it's so capitalist, sauce. really, at the heart of it. It's just it's all about just, money. And how are you a black just, woman telling just, other women that the only way to win is through financial gains? It's, <laughs> it's, 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 shut your bougie ass up, bitch. Shut. Maybe it just was not for your bitch ass, and that's fine. Uh, As a country-ass black girl whose family is from Texas, from Louisiana, from Alabama, from Mississippi, who grew up in that place and knows that culture... And that life, like that, it just felt so good to me to see somebody else, especially somebody like fucking Beyonce, the biggest star in the whole goddamn world, to put out a video saying, you know what? Yes, girl, you're a little country ass. These little black girls that everybody wrote off and nobody ever thought you was going to be shit. And you just come from a little dot in the middle of the fucking plains, girl. This shit is for you. It because while good. you're playing respectability and you're trying to be out here talking about, oh, all of these stereotypes and da, 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 da. She's saying, you know what, girl? I, too, have hot sauce in my bag, and you shouldn't feel no kind of way about it because you never know when you're going to need some. You can't be out here in the streets slipping. Again, Beyonce trying to tell you, bitches, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Period. Point blank. Bitch, you're That's welcome. There is to it. Stop it. And as a bitch, I don't have that Creole background or the Texas and Louisiana thing, but you know yeah. what I do have? <laughs> a goddamn love and respect for hot sauce, and I too enjoy <laughs> cornbreads and collard greens. Well, all my friends and family back home and in Texas, especially Houston and New Orleans, just lived for it immediately. It was just like... Bitch, no, this is it. Like, she's home and she's doing this. Like, she is showing these niggas, like, this is New Orleans. And she's sinking a goddamn cop car and have this little boy dancing in front of police while they surrender to him and not the other way around. And words saying, stop shooting us. Like, it's the blackest shit Beyonce has ever and done. Every time and a, I'm so proud of her. Every time a flash go off in Beyonce face before, you oh, she's trying to be white. Look, she's blinder. Oh, she's she bleached has her skin. Wig, oh, so she, she just wants to be, be white, white so bad. Oh my god! And then she's like, "Well, actually, I really enjoy some nigga shit because yes. you know I'm, you know." I mean, and if you were actually from, a Beyonce fan, I'm a Texas ass Bama. That wasn't no this. secret for us, right? But, but since see, you we just know need that an because excuse. we've listened to her music and seen her shows. You need an excuse to be the girl who just feel differently because you want to stand out yeah. instead of just having a conversation with your mama or daddy about the <laughs> lack of hugs or whatever the fuck <laughs> it is. That that you received you just want to be out here and try yes. and be different and use whatever the fuck you can to be like oh well I disagree because yes. X Y and it's to fine Z. to not like Beyonce but fine. quit making up bullshit about it and Thank just you. say I don't like that bitch Thank you. Cause one girl entered my mentions yesterday and said something about how oh, girl. Um, she didn't like the the cop car drowning scene or whatever because there were black people who actually drowned in cop cars and things in Katrina and I said so okay she said something like, you know, we ain't here for that in New Orleans. And I said, when you say we, you, do you mean, mean you? who else besides you? Because I got people in New Orleans who love it. Because us <laughs> means like you and other people. So yes. I want to know who else. You're Family for. in New Orleans. But even in that situation, you're taking the symbolism in a different way. And art is open for interpretation and those types of things. Mm-hmm. When I see that, I know what you're talking about. Yes. And I would assume that she knows what you're talking about. And that is making I'm it saying sense. fuck the police when Beyonce sinks a cop car. A cop car on top of it. And I'm lays lay out here like, like, so. What's up? That's it. Stop <laughs> shooting us. When that little black baby hit that motherfucking jig and yes. those the only white people in this in video, video the only were the cops. Whites. The right squad, they were like, actually, I'm just going to raise my hands up here because you got it. Amen, Beyonce. I can't even deny that That imagery footwork. for me, nigga, I, seriously, tears came to my eyes. I got like, choked up. Like, my God. And this woman, Beyonce, is doing this, using her platform in this way when she does not have to. Like, I'm just, I'm grateful that she decided to match that with this video. Because it's just, I mean, the song itself is cool. I like it. I'm a jig to it or whatever. But the video, like, I feel like the video is just so it's important. It's just very Probably important. Probably one of her, if not her best, then top two. It's very important for blackness. Whether you yeah. identify with it or not, just in in terms of like the bigger picture, it's yeah. just very important and it's special 
for her just to be celebrating all of these different looks, mm-hmm. all of these these different yes. types of of black people and all these different facets of black culture from gay boys dancing at home or in the club mm-hmm. when bounce music come on to the black church to like parades and like you know it's just, basketball it's just everything. everything it's just all of this stuff and it's like you know what let's just dance and have a good time and and enjoy being who we are but yeah. in the very same time we would also really appreciate it if you would stop killing our babies yes. we would also really appreciate it if you would stop shooting our moms and dads and our fucking sisters and brothers we yes. would really appreciate it if you would stop killing us because all we over here are doing is trying to get information to have a good goddamn time right i beyonce approve this message <laughs> like that's it yes and so for you to be upset about that white is people especially it just proves once again that you simply dislike mm-hmm. when we look love on ourselves yes you do. because that's it it's not an attack on you it can at all be racist because we talk about us right like i don't because when we, because when they talk about self-love they're talking about racism so they assume we are too they assume that we're saying oh well i'm black and that's great and that means you as a white person are some piece of shit and beneath me and not worthy of the same love as i am no we're just saying we're black and even though y'all keep trying at every opportunity to tell us that we ain't shit still we motherfucking rise and take over and dominate and all y'all can do is sit back and be the fuck and salty about it you love it And you have to go looking for it to fucking find it or run her her motherfucking money and go look at it on title. One or the other. And this lady, um, I should, I should, I don't know. She wrote, uh, like there have been thousands of think pieces about this I'm not reading no think pieces. I don't don't care how y'all feel about it. This white woman named Kate Forrestal wrote, uh, and you could have stopped that white woman. She wrote an article about how white people basically need to enjoy formation from the sidelines. Oh, never Because it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> like, <girl. laughs> Got all riled up shit. Let me get it out. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> but no, she like, Sorry, it was Patricia. a really good, she basically, and it shows you that this isn't just about us versus y'all and mm-hmm. y'all just, you know, simply, it, it's just black people hating y'all. It's like, here are white people like, no, Black people are just acknowledging the fact that they would like to live and enjoy their lives. Mm -hmm. And this song is not about us. And it's also, it's okay that you don't identify with it. If it makes you want to dance, duh. But let, let the black community enjoy this and shut your motherfucking ass up. And I was like, (laughs) well, amen for that message. Well, thank you for getting it. Like, absolutely. (laughs) Thank you for getting it because white people, Mm -mm. you just not going to understand it. And in the conversation about, like things like Negro and Bama and oh well how do I say if you wouldn't say Negro and Bama in regular conversation without getting your ass whooped they just don't say it like it's just well, they didn't even know she was saying Bama at first they thought she was saying Banner which they did <laughs> yes that's what uh see how one of those websites was like Beyonce <laughs> proclaims you know proudly being a Texas Banner in new video or something like I think you guys maybe are not black enough to know what this is about and it's hilarious it's fine you know it's a cultural difference and you guys are different and it is what it is but I personally got car sick from the number of times I watched that video on the way back from Brooklyn to Harlem on Saturday night I literally I did nothing else my day I, literally, I was like nothing else nothing I guess else. I'll just reschedule because I'm still <laughs> sitting here watching this fucking yes. video and then she has the nerve just a day later to show up oh at the God. Super Bowl oh to show God. out. Mm. Excuse me? Bitch. And see, honestly, we knew she was going to be on stage on Sunday, so we should have seen something coming on Saturday. But the problem is that Beyonce has let us know that she is way too good for advance notice and things of this nature. She's just going to show up, put it out, and y'all are going to get the fuck over. She went to the game that night. Like, oh, hey, girl. So no big deal. I just dropped a video. Y'all will all deal. Just courtside with her husband and they said she wasn't even on her phone (laughs) i said you know what she doesn't even care that she ruined your whole day and that you have to go and and change shit up and reschedule right oh well you ain't have nothing else to do fix it bombs dropped (laughs) done and then she's at the super bowl the next day and people were talking about oh there were like these rumors and i have just been sticking to this you know this thing where it's like if it doesn't come out her mouth Mm -hmm. i'm just gonna wait yeah that's real but I said to myself, 
you know what? I'm just going to try and prepare. I'm just going to pull out a little, a few of these little extensions, these clip ins, just <laughs> in preparation. I still wasn't ready. She comes out. It was Coldplay's mm-hmm. halftime, uh, show. halftime show. So they perform like three or four songs, and I'm sitting there like, this is great. Yeah. I actually really enjoy you guys. Okay, oh, hey, Yellow. As a I used to love group. this song. Mm. And it was on Yellow. If you could just get out of my face now, please. Like, right. I'm not here for you so or I'm Sailor really Mars. I'm just wondering how many minutes you guys are giving Beyonce because that's all I came here for, to be honest. Mm. Sailor Mars comes out and she's too hot, goddamn. Don't do that. And I don't. I'm she sorry. She came out to Crazy in Love. Or. Wait, no, that was once Beyonce came out and they started the battle. Yeah. Never mind. Mm. I just, I don't, I get it vocally. <laughs> I don't get it otherwise. It's, I you don't mean understand. the song or Bruno? Bruno. Okay. Well. I don't, un- I, vocally he's a beast. Yeah. Other than that, I don't understand. Well, that. all my friends who went to his concert said that it was amazing and he's like a fantastic live performer and puts on a hell of a show. Probably. I mean, he looked good in his little leather outfit and everything. I know he was hot, but it, I mean. I, I see it for Bruno Mars. I understand the appeal and it why like he a is. Rough video. Well, what's wrong with that, really? <laughs> Fact. Anyway, <laughs> don't do this. So then we pan Bruno over. Mars did a good job to all of these women dressed like the Black Panther Party in matching wigs when the Panthers are playing. <laughs> well, that's just you know. I mean, well, coincidence. <laughs> I'm certain. Of course, but... Yes, and all the girls are lined up, looking identical. Beyonce said, I don't give a fuck if you have a perm, a weave, I don't care what color your hair is, bitch. All of you bitches are sitting in the chair. Buzz cut. Somebody will come along in 20 minutes to braid that shit back and get you fitted for your motherfucking wig, bitch. It's That's not a goddamn game it. in this era. We're and if you don't like pros. it, there's a million girls who would kill to be in your spot. And they have <laughs> their numbers <laughs> on an iPhone specifically <laughs> purchased to speed dial their yes. asses. Uh, Blue Ivy was like, I don't want to hear no lip. If you don't like the wig, oh fucking well. Take so your you, ass home. So you have a problem. You have a problem with natural afro. You have a problem with hair that looks like mine, bitch. Please do expound. Get your ass off this guy. <laughs> Get out. You saw the pictures of Blue Ivy, Ivy like looking at the field and stuff before the game started. Right. She knows. Like we be talking uh, about uh, her. Uh, uh, this light. It's late. Nuh-uh. What mm-hmm. is this? What did my mama tell y'all in two thousand two about black girls? And we blue don't lights? have time for this. Jefferson, you can get. We can. You can get missing. Okay, take your job seriously. Y'all saw I cleared out this whole goddamn staff. I'll do it again. Don't fuck with me. Blue Ivy don't play. She performs the song and then they have this like back and forth moment with her and this dance battle between Bruno Mars. And I just feel like ain't y'all tired of losing dance battles to Beyonce live? (laughs) Like, ain't you tired of, like, willingly battling da- Beyonce yeah. on stage and losing? I don't understand. She almost fell and still Millie beat rocked you. her ass almost to the ground and still. She caught it? She merely rocked. She caught it. And God, what? <laughs> blocked it. <laughs> That's right. Every block. Because you can see it on her face for, like, half a second. Like, oh, shit. Like, oh, she goddamn. She like, Nope. Nope. And immediately hit her mark. That's right. Blue Ivy was like, do you see this, ladies and gentlemen? (laughs) Do you see why we are who we are? Pay close attention. Mm -hmm. Run that shit back. That's how you do it. We won't be doing. The ancestors ran right up underneath her thighs like, no, we're not falling today, girl. Not Not at the Super Bowl. Not on this stage. Not today. We won't do it. And just close, like, I don't even know why anybody else did anything. I don't know why anybody showed up for any other reason. Beyonce is the sole purpose of the entire event. Like, it was just, it was life. Everything that she. And then she slaps the camera I when they're talk. done. I can't, I as can't. if to say, I'm actually, you can actually. Like, you can get now. the fuck out of my face now. Right. Like, so after Beyonce and Bruno were done with their little back and forth co-play, then went to play like a montage of all these great moments from Super Bowl performances, mm-hmm. which was nice. It was good to see Whitney up there again because, oh, we did talk about Lady Gaga, but, um, <laughs> and Beyonce and Bruno's little that. clips and stuff, but, oh, you know what? So the thing is, Lady Gaga, I don't know why people thought I was being shady when I said she was giving me share because it's not <laughs> that, 
Listen, we all know that Stephanie can sing. That's never been up for yeah, debate. Yeah, absolutely. We all know it. And she killed it. I'm not saying vocally she was like Cher. But the attitude, the vibe, the costume, all of Like, she was giving me Cher. It was very Cher-ish. I'm not even... It was this bright red pantsuit. I think it was sparkly with matching eyeshadow. And I knew... I thought about Kia when I saw that matching eyeshadow. Because I was like... Oh, yeah, God. the eyeshadow was... <laughs> what are you doing? Address. But aggressive. yes, Stephanie, you know she can sing. And she did a fine enough job but nobody will ever touch Whitney Houston and that Star Spangled Banner it's it just, will literally never happen you, you can't even it just can't won't it even just won't. imply that right. that is it something that may happen and I don't care if she recorded it in advance I don't care who did what like you're never going to make that song sound that good again period it's not ever gonna it's no, never gonna nobody. sound like that and I love Beyonce's version of it it's not Whitney's period nobody's is and then just and and I've accepted it. So I want y'all to stop comparing other people who try to sing that song to Whitney Houston. This it's is just, like, it's foolish. What? It's rude. It's foolish. Like, and it's a waste of time. It, she's in her own category. It don't make sense to compare other people's attempts to that. Yep. Did you see Sierra? Never mind. Because <laughs> I don't even know why I would do that right now when I'm in such a good mood. <laughs> I just... And then... Once the shit is over... Oh, right. So once it, the right, very so it was over and we were all sitting there like... commercial... Which means that Beyonce reached into her purse Mm -hmm. and said, I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to make sure that this gets the slot right after Mm -hmm. the actual shit. And it was her simply twirling around with a flower, a lilac, a goddamn (laughs) hibiscus, whatever the fuck in her fucking mouth (laughs) to announce that she will be going on a world tour, the formation Formation world world tour. tour. And I screamed. I screamed. We all screamed. We're sitting right next to yes. each other. <laughs> Me and you and Asante were like, ah! Ah! Oh my God, it's happening. It's happening. Here she go. Here she go. We had to rewind it to make sure we had the dates right. I'm right. Like, when is it going on sale, bitch? All right. And when is the pre-sale? Okay. Pre-sale tomorrow. Pre-sale on Tickets Tuesday. Tickets go on sale the 16th. We and you girls you niggas. We are talking y'all. about fucking... Um, Starting m- new mortgages and 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 selling no. your damn kids and kidneys and all kinds of shit and <laughs> doing all this this drastic shit to get your tickets. We've been trying to tell you, girls. Yes, amen. We you have. never know what may happen. You and when, never know when Beyonce will decide to come back and just go on a fucking world tour. You just never know. And the first dates might not be till April, May, June, but that don't mean the tickets ain't going on sale Tuesday. And so you basically have Monday today. Now to your get baby your gotta go to go from <laughs> Fruit Loops to Sugar O's. Now your baby can't weeks. go on that field trip this Friday because you really need that extra forty five dollars. So that looking be- forward to the museum, <laughs> but no longer. And you ain't even gonna take their ass to the concert. And <laughs> you're not even gonna take. You them. ain't shit. I'm not mad. You got your tax refund money, girl. Listen, you already know to go on an ear mark a couple hundred for Beyonce. Cause she's coming to take it. And the entitled donated a million dollars to Black Lives Matter. Oh, 1.5. 1.5 million. To Black Lives Matter. I think different causes, not just... I'm not sure ex- exactly, but <sighs> that may, that was like, you know what? I feel good about turning my title back on and I'm going to keep it on now because I want to support businesses that support things that I care about. I just want to say... Okay, we know, we know, <laughs> you uppity bitch, we know. Me okay. and a 15 other folks. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> We Don't just nobody stuck care. around and it was simply <laughs> for shit like this. Because again, you never know. Right. And that's why I can't, t- because now it's like, okay, the general suspense is over, but now when is the fucking album coming out? And, and is are it going we to be a, a visual date? album? Right. Is she going to do gonna it be again? Is it going to be a surprise? She, are we going to get another single? Was that a single? So many unanswered questions. Oh, Beyonce, my God. It's, it's just like, ah, here we go again with your ass. I'm keeping my title on because when the album comes out, I know it's going to be on that bitch. Oh. And I'm listening or experiencing, shutting off my day, clearing my calendar as In soon fact, as it does. Let me look at Twitter because it could have happened right now and we don't even realize That's not it. funny. Don't do that. Okay, no, there's nothing really going on. No, I feel like somebody would have called me. Yeah, someone would would yeah, have, I would have got a call. Yeah, you're right. Definitely. <sighs> so, but we just gotta stay, you know, stay prayed up, stay guarded, because you just never know when this bitch will come back and just take all your shit. And we've been telling y'all that, and some of you listened. 
Shout out to those because I got like 7 million tweets yesterday from people who were like, if you're in Crystal told me to save my money for Beyonce and I'm so glad I did it because I'm going to see this bitch for the first time. Like, amen. Surely nobody would even judge you if you opened up a Beyond Savings Fund, like an account or really just right. like. Or even if you just put extra money aside. Floorboards in the house or, you know, like right. a jar, a mason jar in your closet. However you save money. Whatever it is that you want to do, just, you know, you should be yes. thinking about these things. Yes. Now, if you miss this one, next go round, perhaps, <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? But girl, I will be there. I shall. Oh, yes. You best to believe it. So have you thought about the new album and what you think it's going to sound like? I'm honestly like not that? even trying to fuck with my emotions any more than she already has. I'm just telling myself and her. Give it to me. I don't get you could name it two part two <laughs> Beyonce again. Back for your shit, bitch. I knew Nick Nack Patty Whack. Yes. Slay. Whatever. I don't you care call what it. you call it. It doesn't matter really. Blue Ivy can fucking draw the fucking album cover. I don't yes. give a fuck what you do. Just whenever it's ready, let me know where to input my payment information. Mm -hmm. Or truthfully, I'll probably just be able to stream it on Tidal. But I'm going to buy it too. Right. So just let me know. Also, if you're going to have deluxe and physical editions, I'm going to need that information as well. Um, Box sets. Really, whatever you've got. Vinyl. I've got the money for it. Yes. So Just let me know, sis. Socks. Another calendar. I noticed we didn't get a 2016 calendar. I didn't want to bother you about that. But you know. If there are some throwaway pictures on your iPhone that you don't really care about, you know, I personally would love a calendar. It's just really whatever you feel like doing. Also, if you consider pet things, you know, I'm trying to raise Link up right. We watched the video together. She was very, very impressed. We enjoyed it. She actually sat still and watched it. She was wow. enthralled by the power <laughs> of. I'm, mm -hmm. make, I'm not yeah. shitting you. And so, like... You know, maybe like a little formation <laughs> puppy tea or like a, a bow, <laughs> toy, just something. whatever, just anything. Something. We would appreciate it. We love you, though. Crate. Okay. I will get a formation the puppy skin pad. for her crate. <laughs> right. No, she can't piss on Beyonce. Well, not on Beyonce. Like... Mm, well, never mind. I didn't think about the design aspect of All that. All right, squad. But just something, you know, just really, we are ridiculous and we will do whatever you tell I, us to do. So <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Yeah, no, like, I don't feel bad about it. I feel great about it, actually. Like, standing credit for card information. Is a good decision. Empty box. Yes. Sign me up. I'm prepared. I have <sighs> other things, unless oh, you just want to be like. I mean, because there are other things we could talk about, but like, why? You know I what I'm saying? Wanted, I like, just, I'm just so glad that Beyonce. Like, I just, I'm, I just, I'm thankful. I feel thankful. I'm very grateful because she saved me. I just, there isn't. Who is even in the news? Nothing else is even this interesting. <laughs> like, <laughs> did no? But honestly, did something else happen? Um, Meek Mill's not going to jail. Who He's cares? been sentenced to house arrest. Okay, nobody cares but Nikki. <laughs> And, and I, even she and I don't even think that she and even cares. she's like okay well I can leave Philly so <laughs> to lose cause she gonna be treating just like me and Link like I have to go to work <laughs> and um you sit your ass right here I'll be back later let you out don't fuck nothing up while I'm gone <laughs> act like you got some goddamn sense in this bitch until I get back <laughs> she's gonna talk to him and, like a fucking puppy <laughs> and get back from the studio and the nigga be so excited oh you're back I'm running oh my around god. right <laughs> oh my god you can't and nigga, 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 oh my god <laughs> I'm I sorry. Seen that's so mean. Is it? I mean, yeah, it is. It is mean. Is there something else or not? Because I mean, honestly. Beyonce oh my god! Enough. Did you watch the OJ Simpson show? <laughs> no, it's on my DVR. This shit finna be lit. What? Is it that good? <laughs> that episode it was, was good? good, and it wasn't even because of OJ. Like everything else, the Cuba Gooden show, right? Or it's the yeah American Crime Story. Oh People right, right, right. OJ Simpson. Oh yeah, American Crime Story. And oh, yeah. Cuba Gooding Jr. is playing OJ, and Sarah Paulson is playing Marsha Clark. Um, oh, I can see that. <laughs> just like her. Does she really? John Travolta is playing uh, Shapiro. Courtney B. Vance is playing uh, Johnny Cochran. Oh, wow. Uh, when oh, I tell wow. you that they cast the fuck <laughs> out of this goddamn it show. It sounds like And it. they look just like them. Dave Schimmer from Friends is playing Robert Kardashian. Selma wow. Blair... Oh, the is daddy playing Chris, Jen uh, Chris Jenner. Wow, so Chris Jenner has a part. And speaking roles. What? 
Yeah. Okay. All right, girl. They were at Nicole's funeral, and she talking about Chloe, Kim, sit, stop running around. Yeah, right. I said, girl, she couldn't okay, even. Okay, girl. All she right. couldn't even get her kids to heck right at a goddamn <laughs> white woman's funeral. That is so telling. Anyway. Who's playing Faye Resnick? Um, I don't know. Or is Faye know. Resnick on it yet? Yeah, I mean, how many episodes? It was well, just the first episode. I gotta episode catch up on my DVR. Out. I was, you know, that came on past my bedtime, so. It was so good. And, you know, I was like in third grade when all of this stuff was oh, happening. Yeah. So I just remember it being like everyone was talking about it. And I remember, I feel like I talked about this. I remember sitting in yeah, Miss Walker's, I, I don't know. What a third grade class mm -hmm. and the TV being on for the verdict. And when they said that he wasn't guilty, like all the kids in the classroom and the teacher, my teacher was black. So, of course, she was one of the <laughs> many black folk that yeah. took that as a win. Right. And the like white kids and like Latin kids, black kids, all these kids were super excited. Yeah. That he made it off. And I remember being like, I'm just over here connecting dots. Like, <laughs> like literally. <laughs> I'm drawing. I don't care about none of it. I feel like this is my business. I'm like six. Well, like, yeah, I guess in the third grade, but I was in eighth and we had the same reaction. We were just so hype. If, I feel like eighth grade, I, I may have been a little bit more invested. Why? Like, I don't know why we cared. I mean, I guess because our parents did, but we were so into it. And the white kids were it. happy that OJ got off, which in yeah. hindsight is very confusing. Like, because OJ was more than just a football player. Remember, like, he was like, Acting. He, like, he was a star. Yeah, no, he was a star, but still he killed a white woman. And like you he, just wouldn't expect they him wouldn't, to. They wouldn't. They didn't care. Well, not that they didn't care, but they were, but they were this, hype. This show. Oh, hey. who didn't put their phone on Do Not Disturb before they came to the studio? IDK. Actually, thanks for calling me because you just made me realize I need to change my ringtone to formation. Okay. Um, But <laughs> they started the show out. With like a lot of the stuff that happened during the Rodney King riots, so it really oh, kind of sets the tone okay. for where Black people, people were, were. Yes. at the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's really cool for me to watch it because I kind of remember it happening, but I don't know enough yeah. about it to really like. I'm gonna really be submerged in this case, and it looks like it's gonna be good because they are doing some acting. Wow. Okay. I'm going to check it out then. I'm I'm almost mad I missed it, but I guess that helps, you know, provide some context for why black people were like, I don't give a fuck if he did it or not, you know. OJ right. is that innocent. He don't need to go to jail. Fuck that. But we had been, you know, dealing with a lot as we typically are in and this a fucking few country. years later, black people started coming out that cave like, okay. Like, <laughs> But it took us a while. We didn't want him to go to jail. Yeah. Shit. We be going to jail for shit we didn't do. Let this nigga go free. <laughs> that was my logic at age 12. <laughs> Black people are routinely imprisoned for no reason. And our neighborhoods are over police. And you are continually <laughs> walking through the streets after you do kill your damn white ass wife. Right. I, didn't care. I just remember being like, well, I'm just here coloring in the lines, girl. <laughs> coloring inside my lines. Giving the outline a harsh yeah. thing with it. You know, remember like when you would like outline the drawings? Real like thick real and then thick. color in light. Oh, and so it just it would be gave so like cute. a pop. Yes, it was that really contrast great. was popping. It was everything. That was when I decided to start taking my coloring career seriously. Me too. Yes, when I was like, I've been bullshitting I upgraded years. like my crayon with box. good box with the sharpener on the back. Exactly. Yes. And like the hundreds. Well, yeah. I don't know if it was hundreds. It was like 64 96, crayons 92, or some shit. Yeah, 64. Like that. Yeah. Deluxe. That my mama wasn't going to buy. So I had to save my allowance for like two months. Absolutely. Because I was a coloring boss. That 12 boss. pack is just fine. It's, you for have your little school work. Red, blue, green. I don't understand. You have what orange, else do you even need? Black. You even have white you in there. You have white. And you don't no even reason. need it. So like, you can't you, see it. Right. So I don't understand. What other fuck color do you need? You need eggshell. You don't need no magenta. You don't need no accrue. Get your ass no. Baby powder blue and Bitch, shit. Bitch, Walmart got these back to school crayons on sale for 35 cents. This the fuck you getting. So I had to, you know, That's you got to save get. up to get the good. When you decide to take your coloring skills to the next level, start right. doing that hard ass out. <laughs> you better get you some Crayola uh, coins. <laughs> right. Get you a I don't Crayola know. job. Do you have, right. Do you have McDonald's money? Do you have Beyonce money? Do you have what? That was my mama's favorite line. Do you have whoever money? Where's the money? Because I'll gladly take you to go to it as long as you can we pay can go to right entertain now. yourself. You just need to put the money in yeah, my hands. Yeah, because I know you can't drive. I'll drive. You understand. Because I'm not. But I don't know how you're going to get in or enjoy yourself because you don't have any money. So. <laughs> it's a harsh reality. I feel like we covered plenty. Yeah, that's what And it was really like two things. Uh, it doesn't, Maybe perhaps three. All you need to know is Beyonce's The here. meat of the situation, though, <laughs> I feel like we need to stay focused on the happening. Yes. And that is... 
the Beyonce came and said, clear! And just, like, shot yes. life back into what I thought were dead emotions when yes. it came to problems. And I needed that black girl power. I needed that, you know what? We're beautiful, and all they do is talk shit about us and try to take away from us. But we're gorgeous, and here's women, black women of every different color right here to represent it. And just slay, bitches. Slay, because that's and what we do. And damn it, even if we don't, we don't need it on a day or at a time, we gonna do this shit anyway. Because we're tired of telling you hoes that us loving on us ain't got nothing to do with yes. you. If you feel inferior because we're over here celebrating the fact that we're black and beautiful and we work hard and make money but still love red lobster and hot sauce and chicken <laughs> and cornbread and collard and greens then I don't know what the fuck to tell you you should really speak to somebody and get some professional help on why you don't like seeing niggas enjoy themselves Amen. and that's just like people in general like anybody clearly you have a dysfunction or some kind of chemical imbalance that is stopping you from using actual like clear logic <laughs> because you just hate seeing people happy that ain't you and that's something you should talk to somebody about. Yeah, take it up with Jesus. Okay, let's take a break. Hey guys, this episode is being brought to you by Squarespace, where they make it extremely easy for you to have a website, portfolio, or online store that looks professionally designed. Regardless of your skill level, there's no coding required, and you can still have a place on the internet that looks like it would be Oprah's favorite thing. <laughs> so they've got intuitive and easy to use tools. And you get a free domain if you sign up for a year. We even use Squarespace ourselves for our website. This is a three dot com. And it makes it incredibly easy for you to go there and get information about what we're doing and stuff. So you should try it the same if you need a website. Yes. And not only does Squarespace provide you with intuitive and easy to use tools, they also have state of the art technology to power your site, ensuring security and stability. And, you know, you can trust in Squarespace for your website needs when millions of people and some of the most respected brands in the world trust in them, too. Again, like we said, it is so easy and simple. Even my slow ass can do it. So head on over to Squarespace and get started today. Make sure you use offer code READ to get 10 percent off your first purchase. That's Squarespace.com with offer code READ. Squarespace, you should. And now let's get back to the show. So we're back, and now it's time for listener letters. It sure is. Send your questions to asktheread at gmail.com. Our first question comes from Tisha, who says, My fiance and I have been together for almost nine years. The year before we got together, his mother passed away tragically. Fortunately for him, he was able to keep a lot of her decorative things. And since we've been living together in our apartment, he's used his mother's pictures and trinkets to decorate. I'm sorry about this call. Go ahead. Here's the thing. I hate that horrid shit with every fiber of my soul. Jesus. It's dated as hell and it was dated when she was still alive. Some of it is straight up broken and glued back together or it's just hideous. Girl. Oh my goodness. He loves these things and has a major attachment to them for obvious reasons. He thinks they're Very art pieces. Obvious. Right. And often talks about how his mom had a great eye for art. In his head, this shit is hot and I don't want to hurt his feelings, but mm, where did it go? He just lost it. I don't want to hurt his feelings, but for one, I don't want another woman decorating my house. Oh, girl. For two, it's dated and broken. And for three, it's just dead ass ugly. What the hell? I can put up with a few of those things. And by some, I mean like two out of 10. But to have every photo on the wall be his mama's mama, I want to sing, looking art, giraffes with broken necks and African figurines that are given out early 90s. is just too much to bear. How do I tell my fiance in a nice way? Hey, that shit is ugly. And I don't want it in my house without hurting his feelings. Am I being a petty bitch or not? Well, she put bish, but I don't know why, because. Well, or ya. Yeah. <laughs> so, Tisha. Mm, I like, mean, girl, build a bridge and climb right on over that shit, girl. Because one thing about it, I don't give a fuck about how you feel about no shit. If I have something that, especially me being a hardcore mama's boy, but I figured this would just be for anybody. If I have something that reminds me of my mother or that is just something my mother gave me or my mother owned and it's just something that makes me think about her i'm gonna put it wherever the fuck i want to right. where i reside period and you just gonna have to deal with it and you're talking about his mama passed away last year no no no, not last year 10 years ago oh 10 years ago but she died the year before they got together they've been together oh. for almost nine years i'm sorry so no she didn't just die but still yeah, I mean, it don't really make no difference. Right, difference. it doesn't, I can't see too many people really being like, oh, well, that changes my answer. Like, not really. Um, <laughs> I just feel like that's something that you're going to have to get over. And I think, if anything, you need to uh, say, look, I understand that these are things that are uh, 
really important to you. And mm-hmm. I want for I respect that. And I want for you to feel or have those feelings and whatnot. Is there a way that we can compromise design wise? <laughs> like, yes. how can we set these things up so that it the place is designed differently and it's a way that I can digest it? How can we mix maybe some of my style in here yeah. to make it? you know, the best of both worlds instead of saying that that shit is ugly and I just don't like it. And I don't give a fuck if it is your yeah. dead mama's. We need to get you're rid being of kind it. of no, you're you're being kind of mean about it. And maybe just because you're talking to us, but you're yeah. just being real like blunt about his dead mother's things. And it it just sounds very harsh for you to talk that way about those possessions. Like, I get that you don't like them, but if I were you, I would approach this in the way that, you know, couples normally have to approach design and taste differences in more of a like you know let's see how we can come together and make this room the both of us instead of just you know a bunch of your stuff in one spot and a bunch of stuff in mine but it's hard for me to get rid of things that my mama gave me and she's still alive like and they're ugly I know like she gave me an umbrella and an old ass tattered ass wallet like that is basically not even functional anymore and it took me six seven years to throw that shit away and she's i can still call her whenever i want to people feel a way about their mamas like i i would hope that you would understand that don't even and and please don't it. talk to him the way you talk to us about this stuff please my god please don't even do consider because jesus like i mean i understand she's been gone a decade but girl like talk to him about you know maybe we can put some of some things you know around here or I don't know. Maybe he can have like a little shrine for her somewhere else in the house. I mean, I don't feel like saying dated is a bad thing. Right. Dated is real. You could say like the room feels a little dated to me. How can we like change up the design a little bit? So that it feels whatever, and I'm a little bit more comfortable with the design. Because it just sounds like trinkets getting, and stuff. Yeah, it sounds like it's little just shit. Like, and maybe a couple of pictures of some stuff. And I know when she gave the description, I knew exactly what she was talking about. It's some of that like stereotypical '90s black art, Absolutely. and you know where the man is holding up the globe and the woman Absolutely. is draped on top of it or some shit. Do you know shit. how much of that shit my grandma had? Oh, man, and my auntie, like I know. <laughs> I exactly get it, girl. What you're I about. get it. I would not necessarily want it in my house either. But you have got to talk to that man about it in a totally different way and in a way that's not saying your mother's things are ugly and she had horrible taste I need to get rid of them like because that's basically what you said to us yes what you said to me girl so (laughs) So, good luck with that conversation truly do hope that it works out let us know how it goes our next question comes from we'll see this one I am just kind of (sighs) my god so Lord, I don't even know typically I'm gonna just say this real quick. This oh, is God. I try to stay away from questions from high school students because it creeps me out a little bit that y'all listen to this show. As well. <laughs> <laughs> but this one I felt like, you know, let us so anyway. This, oh no. My name is Kendall and I'm an eighteen year old high school student for fourteen away. Okay, so let me try over and read this time. I'm an eighteen year old high school student who's fourteen weeks away from graduating. Since the beginning of my senior year, I've had an innocent infatuation with my trigonometry teacher. At first, it was just like a cute fake crush. And me and a few of my friends would make our little childish jokes and move on. But since the start of the second semester, this teacher, who I'll call Mr. Mason, started talking to me more and hanging out at his desk more and asking me to come to class during my free period to help him grade papers and things like that. After Uh... that, he started to bring me lunch and we'd eat in the classroom, sometimes alone, but sometimes there would be other kids drifting in and out and eating there, too. Throughout this whole time, our conversations were never sexual or inappropriate in any way. Recently, he's begun to share with me some of his marital issues and sharing his past experiences fooling around with men and asking about when and how I came out of the closet. Oh, these are two men. Yes. Two two male people. Oh. And my struggles being a gay teenager, etc. I was happy to be spending time with him, even though my little crush was never more than just a little crush. However, now the window is open for us to participate in a more sexual relationship as he's made somewhat of a pass at me. (sighs) My question is, should I do this? I know my teacher's married, but he's only 25 and it's not like he's about to move her out and move me in. I'm just trying to satisfy a long lasting itch. Whatever he wants to get out of it is truly none of my business. And you know what? It's truly none of mine. Thanks for your advice and continue slaying the game like you have been for three years. My goodness. Kendall, 
I just vote no. I vote no. I feel like, you know what? <sighs> at least you are allegedly 18. But at the same time. No. No, uh, no, 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 no. I don't care if you're 20. If you are still in school and that man is your teacher, the answer is no. Absolutely no. No, no. And I would say that because I would say the same thing to kids in college talking about sleep with their professors. I would too. I mean, it's it's less creepy than high school, but the answer is still no. Don't Ew. do it. I mean, he and it's just there's an imbalance of power there that it should not be taking place in a sexual relationship. Like you are, it's 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 predatory, honestly. And I understand that you have a crush on this teacher, but he knows that, and he is using that to get to you. That is so gross. And oh, I am just, my I, God. and and I say this because there, I know there are so many of you, you know, not young people, but you know, you're young adults, and you are listening to the show and getting out in the world and learning new things and becoming grown and experimenting and all this stuff, which is great. But like any adult, any adult who is trying to sleep with you, run away from that motherfucker. I'm sorry. This man is 25 years old and and is ready to risk his job and and go to jail, ready to risk his marriage to sleep around with his 18 year old student. Like, like my nigga, you can't just download Grindr or Jax like the rest of you girls who be like, I'm honestly and disgusted it. that there are people like this, like in our high schools working with our kids and so willing to do some shit like this. It just, I'm, I'm disgusted. I don't, I'm, disgusted. I'm not for it. I don't like it. I mean, but see, I understand being 18 and having a crush on my teacher too. I just don't know what it's oh, like I for my teacher to actually like me back. Crushes on teachers too. And if I had a situation where I could have been my teacher's assistant or something and I had a crush, I probably would. I would have done it definitely. But the second you start talking to me about your marital issues would have been the moment that I would have been oh. like, oh, no. Right. <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> That would have been the moment where I've been like, this just got too real. Yes. Your no. teacher being married is not the most wrong thing about this. You said that, like, I know he's married. Like, that was the wrong thing. It isn't. It, I mean, it is. I mean, it is, but it's like fourth on the list. The fact that it even got into conversation about that, like, you're now taking it to, like, a personal it does like y'all don't even need to have that type of relationship where you're talking about your marital, your relationship, right. your sexual relationships, your That's sexual far life a or identity. Relationship. It's not appropriate for a student a teacher relationship at all. And like Crystal is saying, I feel like it is also very predatory because while he may just be however many years older than you, he is very cognizant. He's very aware of what he's doing there. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like that's, mm-mm, no. Especially because he's married and, he's and a like... stone cold dumbass. Ugh, no, he is He no. is willing to risk his reputation and his job and go to prison to maybe mess around with an 18-year-old boy. Like, how dumb can you be? How bad can you want... This is why people have to be honest with themselves. Perhaps had you been honest with yourself and never gotten into this loveless, doomed marriage, perhaps you would have learned to be happy and find a male partner some years ago and it, it developed yourself. Do you see yourself. why it's complicated? It's because the same... Oh, this is your DL video and why it won't come out? <laughs> it's so... It's such a long... Co- Kendall, because it's like a Kendall, double... Kendall, please you, don't I mean, do this. Because don't. At, on one end... You have motherfuckers like this who are looking at this boy who I guess, you know, I'm assuming is out or yeah, he's out, with right. enough with his sexuality. Mm-hmm. And he's sitting there like, and the teacher how do you it. do that? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, because I have these feelings or whatever right. that I'm not comfortable acknowledging publicly. And now here I am in this marriage, but I've messed around and clearly I'm still kind of interested. And that whole kind of thing, because you feel this pressure from society mm-hmm. to, to be, be somebody that you aren't. So you can't just live the life that you want to and meanwhile you homophobic girls and a lot of y'all who are also on the DL Mm -hmm. be mad at the girls who are comfortable out here living their life you know completely open they're an open book you know what you get and you know what you signing up for (laughs) when you look at this motherfucker and meanwhile you have all these motherfuckers dipping and dabbing behind closed doors fucking with your wife and then coming and putting their dick in somebody else's um behind <laughs> lots oh, of times condomless and coming right back to their girlfriends and wives fucking their best friends right. fucking Nick, you know what I'm saying so it's just like it's complicated because whatever I mean it is complicated but 
as far as Kendall is concerned, <laughs> yeah, as far as you it's go, very cut and dry. No matter what issues your your teacher may have, and they may be very valid issues that affect a lot of people. Under no circumstances should he have ever approached a student in that manner. Period. I don't care if you legal or not. The answer is fucking no. And so please, please, I understand it may be tempting. Do not do this. My God. Please do not. I vote as I vote no as well. Huh. Our last question comes from Kayla, who says, "Today I received a Facebook message from a guy saying you put on quite a few pounds, and I was at a loss for words. I could not even come up with a response. The statement is completely true. However, why do people feel like they can comment on someone else's weight when everybody has mirrors at home and know what they look like? In the future, what is the appropriate response to something like this besides who the fuck asked you? X O X O Kayla. I feel like who the fuck asked you is. I feel like that's more than appropriate. Yeah, I don't. Because nobody has the right to just comment on your body completely unsolicited. And the fact that you put up a picture does not mean you ask somebody to tell you whether they looked good in your eyes. Like, girl, the fuck? Yes, absolutely. Next time, tell him, I don't know who the fuck you thought you was talking to. Why but do you I'm need to one. find a nice way to say something when they didn't say nothing nice to you? Yes, yeah, find a nice way to say that to you. <laughs> stop I trying don't... to save people's feelings when they went out of their way to hurt yours. Right. Like, fuck that. Uh, don't Bitch, do... nobody ask you no motherfucking question. <laughs> do you think I don't know that I got bigger? You didn't. Un... You thought I didn't realize that I had to buy different pants and get new shoes and all that? Like, did you think I didn't know that about myself? Is there a PSA? Why is it necessary to say this to me? You like, put on a, quite a few opinions that nobody fucking <laughs> requested. We <laughs> asked you how the fuck you feel about anything. Shut right. your ass up. I put on some pounds and you got yourself on this internet and decided to step outside your business and come tell me about it. Why For don't what? you eat my ass and take a couple of them with you? <laughs> Don't worry about being gentle with people who are assholes, girl. Go ahead and be crazy right back. Go ahead and say something rude and disrespectful right the fuck back. I want everybody who gets shitted on all the time by people you know in these little passive aggressive ways to just get aggressive with their asses right back and let them know, no, what you said was not okay and you're not allowed to talk to me like that. Fuck you. Really? Why do I have to be nice to you? Bitch, exactly. Please. And I won't do it. So I hope that helps, Kayla. If you have a question, send it to ask 3 to gmail.com and we'll be back. Hello, people with breasts. Valentine's Day is coming up and the perfect gift would be the perfect fit. Of course, I'm talking about Third Love and their 24-7 t-shirt bra. It is the most comfortable bra I've ever owned. I'm actually not lying when I say that to you. I can sleep in this bra, which is brand new for me. I don't typically do that. The girls have to have their time for resting and airing out. You know how it goes. But the third love bra is amazing. It's super smoothing and invisible under every outfit. The cups are made out of memory foam, so it molds to your shape to give you the most amazing fit. And third love stands behind the product so much that they're willing to let our listeners try the bra for free. Yes, girl, for free. All you have to do is pay $1 for shipping. But wait, you wear it for 30 days, take the tags off wash it sleep in it if you want to like i do if you love it keep it and they'll charge your card if you don't send it back for free and your card won't be charged it's that simple if you don't know your size a friendly online fit specialist will help you find your perfect fit so go to thirdlove.com slash read to get started that's www.thirdlove.com slash r-e-a-d get started today give your girls a break and let's move on guys this read is also being brought to you by nature box Dedicated to making smart, delicious snacking real, real easy. Nature Box snacks taste amazing without any high fructose corn syrup, trans fats, MSG, artificial colors, sweeteners, flavors, K Michelle's, none of that nastiness. And they make finding a range of options from healthy to indulgent very easy. And they combine unique flavors with ingredients you can pronounce to create great snacks you may not want to share because who has a problem saying things like, peanut butter nom noms or Santa Fe sticks, you know, and they all taste real good. Yes. I know because I shove them in my face at hours. I shouldn't be all the time. Yes. And they're amazing. Like it's, Imagine walking into a grocery store and finding an entire aisle of snacks personalized just for you. All the things you love, all your favorites, none of the stuff you don't, all in one place. It's super amazing, and that's exactly what Nature Box can do for you. You can pick out the snacks you want or be surprised every month, and you can choose the size of the box that works for you and your family. So again, head on over to naturebox.com slash the read to unbox a world of taste and personality and possibility. It's naturebox.com slash the R-E-A-D for your first box of Beyond Tasty hand-picked snacks sent direct to your doorstep. Now, let's finish the show. So we're back and it's time for the read. 
It is. Do you have a read this week? Um, I kind of do, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't really. That's fine. So first, let me, I mean, I'm not just, I'm not going to do a read. I'm just going to say to the anonymous person who nominated Donald Trump for a Nobel Peace Prize, I'm afraid you don't understand what the word peace means. Okay. Um, that he was nominated for his vigorous peace through strength ideology used as a threat weapon of deterrence against radical Islam, ISIS, nuclear Iran, and communist China. So, yes, I guess somebody super old, super racist, and super rich decided to nominate Donald Trump for a um, Nobel Peace Prize. He's not even on the short list of people who will win. Like, there's basically not a chance in hell that he actually would yeah, win. I'm I just want to remind you niggas that words do mean things. And you cannot nominate somebody who has vowed to bomb the shit out of a group of people for a fucking peace prize, girl. Just it just isn't how it goes. It's, not how it works. it's the peace prize, bitch. The everybody turn down, bitch. The nap time, bitch. The slow it the fuck down, bitch prize. The chill out prize. Not the nigga who wants to shoot up a school prize. Not the nigga who wants to bomb Muslims prize. I just, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? I just, I hate the world. So, but anyway, that's all I got. So I just want to say, I mean, this is going to be a very quick story. Oh, Lord. So yesterday, PETA decided that they were going to um, (laughs) send out these little notes on Twitter about how over 300 million chickens die every year. Around this time for 1.3 billion wings for you guys to eat during the Super Bowl. And I was like, first of all, that math sounds real fishy. But either way. I mean, if it is, so what? I don't know (laughs) what to tell you. Oh, chickens don't need their wings. No, chickens need their (laughs) wings. And you don't try vegan. I said, first of all, I'm going to disrespectfully disagree. Because... I feel like I actually do need those wings and you don't know my life to tell me otherwise. Chickens can't even fly. Where the fuck they going? They don't need their wings are pointless. Their wings also make me very happy Mm -hmm. and full. I respect chicken. I honor chicken. I have honored chicken publicly for quite some time because it is for chicken is because chicken dies Mm -hmm. that I may live. And that is not blasphemy. It's a smooth fact. (laughs) Chickens die so that I can eat them and I have to eat to continue living. And so I really just respect chicken more than anything for allowing me to enjoy their wings. But here you go again, trying to convince me that I should just eat tofu and cardboard and shit because chickens have wings and things like that. And I love animals. I respect them and things like that. But I don't care how many baby chick Charlotte's web ass pictures you show me, bitch, (laughs) on this motherfucking this happy ass farm shit that you want to come and send to me. I'm going to eat as much goddamn chicken as I want. And just to be a pet, that's not even the read. Oh, okay. (laughs) That's cool. Just to be a petty bitch, I decided I was going to place an order to the wing stop to go get chicken for the game. Mm-hmm. I just want a chicken for myself. I didn't really expect on watching. Like I said, you know, I'm going to watch the game because, you know, my bae Cam Newton is playing, you know, and okay. I love you forever. And don't let them, don't let them try and, and, and beat you up and fuck you around with this or whatever. Can't nobody tell you how the fuck to feel or if you lost the goddamn Super Bowl. Like, I want a bitch who has actually lost the Super Bowl and been like the main bitch, the motherfucker with everybody eyes on them. Everybody talk. I don't care how much shit you talk. You talk shit because you played good games. You didn't play the greatest game of the Super Bowl, but at the same time, okay, I'm not gonna tell you how the fuck you should feel about that shit. Now just come home. All oh, right, just come home. Um, so I said, you know, I'm just gonna. <laughs> you are ridiculous. I ordered twelve wings just for me because I said I'm just gonna be at the home That's watching a good the little personal game. Number. Right. We're just watching the game and, you know, the Beyonce concert. And somebody says to me, like, you know, you're ordering these wings, like, just a few hours before the game. And I said, I know what I'm getting myself 
into yeah. here. There's a chance I might get these this chicken, and if that's the case, I'm gonna enjoy the chicken. Truthfully, diet wise, I shouldn't be eating this shit no way. Right. But I'm getting them because I deserve. So I knew it's what Super I was Bowl signing. Sunday. It's Super what? Bowl fucking As an Sunday. American, you have to eat wings, bitch. It's in the Bible. It's just kind of how it goes. Right. It's so, in the Constitution, really. I said, you know what? I know that this is gonna be a shit show, but it's either I get these twelve wings or I don't. I paid nineteen dollars for them. It is what it is. So I get to the wing stop. Mind you, on 125th. You went on time? No, I went. You know how the, when you order online, you can either choose ASAP uh-huh. or you can pick a time that you want to yeah. pick it up. Don't ever do that. Don't ever choose a time you want to pick it up. I mean, it would. I would have been fucked regardless. Oh, because you're right, placed, because it was Super Bowl Sunday on 125th right, Street. Right. I placed the order at like 3.30. Oh, me too. What the fuck? Right. And so I went down there and when I got there, I did do the um the later thing oh you did yeah and so i said it for 5 30 because i said i mean worst case scenario i'm really just trying to see beyonce and cam newton being fine mm-hmm. and so like i don't care if i miss whatever else <laughs> so again i don't really have anything to lose here right i just wanted to see if i could get some chicken <laughs> i went into the wing stop oh, God. and niggas are in there first of all it looked like they were handing out vip passes to heaven yeah Like, Jesus was going to have, like, a street fair, Mm -hmm. and these were, like, all-access passes. Like, it was so crowded. And so, you know how it says on the thing, go up to the counter if you ordered online. Skip that line. Mama, they're no longer taking walk-in orders. They're no longer taking (laughs) phone call orders. They are simply trying to give people the chicken that they ordered online. And they were like an hour and a half behind Mm -hmm. the time. Of course. So they're saying whatever your pickup time was, you better tack on an additional about 90 90 minutes (laughs) before you actually see that. So my problem isn't even with Wingstop because I'm standing in line. And of course, by the time I get up to the counter... They're like, you know, your shit might be done by like 7, 30, 7, 45. I said, the queen is probably going to be on stage around that time. So you can just go ahead and cancel my order. <laughs> and I don't have anything against you. I understand. My issue is with all of these niggas who are standing in Wingstop trying to tell these niggas how to prepare the food and do their jobs. And all you are doing is yelling and cussing, talking about, oh, it's going to get ugly in this bitch. Oh, we got to set some shit off. You didn't know it was Super Bowl Sunday. Bitch did you like did you not understand that this is the wing day in america and you chose wing stop to order chicken and then you placed your pickup time for an hour before the show and just expected that that you were gonna come up in here and they were gonna be like so here's your wings and also we also have the beyonce cd in advance (laughs) for you like they were just going to make wings appear out of nowhere i can't stand when bitches put themselves in dumb ass predicaments like that and then you go there and just expect that you're going to get your way. Right. And now you're yelling at these people as if they're tr- like they're trying to do their job as fast as they possibly can. Mm-hmm. You yelling at them and trying to give them advice on how to run a fucking restaurant is not going to get you your chicken any faster. Right. So shut your ass up and let this be a lesson for the next time you do this. It don't matter if you ordered your chicken two days in advance. <laughs> you thought that because you ordered your chicken on Friday... Yes. And had that your pickup time be for six o'clock, that you were going to get your chicken at six o'clock? Did you think on that Super were- Bowl Sunday at Wingstop? You thought that? You really thought that? At, on 125th Street in Harlem. And Lennox, right there. Smack dab in the, in middle, the middle of, of all of this black-, black people are here. Black people are here. You really thought? Okay. You thought that they were going to do what? Cook the chicken on Friday and just... Just have it waiting? And then just warm it up for you? For that case, if that was the case, but you should have just bought the chicken on Friday and took that shit home (laughs) and froze it and then reheated or whatever when Super Bowl came around. Like, girl, obviously they're going to cook the chicken fresh so that you have the chicken for the time that you want to pick it up. So that just wasn't a good idea. Yeah. I know this because I didn't have shit to lose. Right. I said cancel my order and they called me and woke me up out of my sleep this morning and said, just to let you know, that cancellation went through... (laughs) 
<laughs> and we are quite sorry. I said, you ain't got shit to be sorry about. Wow. I knew what I was signing up for yes. when I approached that bitch. When you ordered chicken on Super Bowl Sunday, what's crazy is I did too from the <laughs> exact same place at 3.30 in the afternoon and I got that email that said your chicken be ready at 3.50. I said, yeah, the fuck right. <laughs> Right, because but your chicken knew. But your chicken still, even with the delay, your chicken still would have been ready before. Right, because the I game ordered started. at three, th- and I told myself if you're gonna order for wing stop and you want it in time for the game, you better not order past four p.m. because it's not gonna fucking happen. And that's why I ordered at three thirty, and that's why I went to wing stop at four thirty because I knew the shit was not gonna be done in twenty minutes. And when I got there, I went straight to the front. It was starting to get crowded people was lined up waiting had an attitude and the girl in front of me was arguing with the manager about her chicken not being done he kept telling her it's gonna be 20 more minutes and she was like so if i come back in 20 minutes and it's not done what you gonna do so what's the fuck's gonna happen then like what are you going what to are do you going question. to do girl what are you going to do other than sit here and be mad and wait for your fucking chicken to be done what oh well, i'm calling corporate to do? and corporate is going to sit there and and listen and nod their fucking heads and say mm-hmm, yeah absolutely i i Mm, I hear you. And you know what? You did the best you could. And as soon as they hang up with you, they're going to say, I am so sick and tired of these dumb ass <laughs> motherfuckers calling us to complain that they didn't get their chicken on time on Super Bowl Sunday. Like you didn't have any other, like no other plans. Like you didn't even feel like, you know what? Let me get on Seamless right. or something and just order from some random place that possibly has um, good wings that's off the grid. You chose yeah. the place with wing in the name. With these bright ass lights saying wings stop, so no niggas can stop and get wings. wings right. You chose that place On Super Bowl an Sunday. hour before the game to get chicken, and now you are yelling and cussing and threatening at these people who are just trying to do their jobs, who probably also would like to go home and watch the goddamn game and eat some chicken because you put yourself in this fucked up position. Right. I hate when people go into people's jobs like that. And granted, there's a lot of motherfuckers in in New York, especially mm-hmm. who have jobs and treat it like they wish that they didn't and probably shouldn't have it and a couple of you motherfuckers might as well just quit and let somebody who will do their job the way that they should do their job and mm-hmm. be respectful to people let them come in and do it but I really loathe when motherfuckers come in and treat people like shit because they're paying or because they're you're spending their money to get a service or to get a product or whatever these people are out here busting their ass they're on their feet they've been on their feet all goddamn day and you're making their job 20 times worse when in fact you could have just done something much simpler right. and gotten what you wanted when you wanted it but you wanted to be a dumbass <laughs> and now you want to be an out loud dumbass with these motherfuckers and you mad that they have an attitude with you now because after a while they're just like you know what well the chicken gonna be done in another 30 possibly whatever it is and and by the time the i got up there and the man was like oh well your chicken is done Yes, because I placed my order an hour and 15 minutes ago. That's why my order is ready to go. And I don't understand why young miss in front of me didn't know that. If you've ever been to that wing stop before, you know good and goddamn well. Them niggas is late on orders on a Tuesday on a afternoon. Regular ass on a regular day, ass bruh. day when fucking nothing is happening. Them niggas do not have the chicken ready on time. So I knew to give them at least an hour on Super Bowl Sunday. And I don't know why you dumbasses didn't. But you know what? God bless. Godspeed. You decided to order from Wingstop at 5 p.m., <coughs> didn't you, girl? On Super Bowl Sunday when the game started at 6, didn't you, girl? And thought it wasn't going to be nothing. Thought it was going to be, what, 30, 45 minutes to get your chicken? Niggas was in there at 3.30 with 100 piece orders waiting to go out. They was throwing out chicken the same way everybody else is throwing out pizzas and shit. Like, they are busy today. If you do not have a plan in order, do not get mad at somebody else because you did not have your shit together. All you have to do is just use the brain the guy gave you. And a lot of people walked in there and pro- and were shocked. I don't understand how you were shocked. But my thing is the people who are yelling and cussing and just being disrespectful when, in fact, you could have just used common sense and you wouldn't even be in this situation in the first place. Right. That shit annoys me. So that's my read. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up this week's episode of The Read. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr at This Is The Read. <coughs> and check out our website, thisistheread.com. Also, I just saw this email from Planned Parenthood. Apparently, we have been nominated for the Dreamkeeper list in honor of Black History Month for our outstanding commitment to a healthier and more just society. So thank you so much. Apparently, oh, the, so kind. the Dreamkeepers list will be on... Um, their website starting soon so i will tweet that from the uh twitter for the read so but thank you planned parenthood that's very nice and i feel very warm inside about that so so dope 
So thanks to NBC BLK for including me in that. Uh, did I say thank you for that? Um, I think you did, but if you, I mean, no point in last week nothing wrong with saying. But either way, thanks again. <laughs> you very were very honest. crabby last week. So very. <laughs> you were very. And you can hear in like my sinuses, my throat, everything. You can still hear why. Yes. But I came here to celebrate. Yes, we did. We came here to celebrate the goodness and grace that is Beyonce, and I think we did that today. So anything else? Um, I will be in. LA this coming weekend now instead of last weekend and apparently this weekend's the Grammys so bring on the traffic oh yeah you're not going to be able to get anywhere <laughs> shout out to your Uber being three point <laughs> regular rate like okay sure guys yay but still I mean who knows who you'll see though that could be fun possibly or not Grammy Oscars right no it's the Grammys this weekend mm-hmm. I thought the so when are the Oscars I thought the Oscars were Monday I don't know. Are the Grammys... Okay, you know what? I clearly need to be doing some I can do my Googles as well. No, it's fine. Do you have an acronym this week or... G-I-F. I mean, it's pretty... Giselle... It's right there. No, that's not it. Great. No, no, no. God. No, I mean, love him, but that's not it either. G. Is it G or J? It's a G. Gus. Nope. Gustav. Get. Get. Get it. Get. 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 Get in. Get in. Get in front. Get in formation. Formation.